In this video, we're going to have a look at how to deal with fractional indices. Now, if you think about what happens when you square something, what happens is that you, you multiply it by itself. So, if we think about what happens when you have the square root of a and you square it, all you're doing is you're multiplying root a by root a and you end up with a. Now, we've seen already that the power of a power um, what you end up doing is just getting the product of the powers. So a to the power of a half all squared is a, a to the power of a half times 2, which is a to the power of 1, which is just a. Now if you think about it, if you're squaring something and it's giving you a, and you're squaring something else and it's giving you a, then these two things must be the same thing. So that's our first thing, uh, our first rule to think about when we are dealing with fractional indices. Now, what we have shown is that it works with um, a to the power of a half, but it also works with any power, whether it's in the form of 1 over n. So a to the power of a third is going to be the cube root, a to the power of a quarter is going to be the fourth root, and so on. So we say a to the power of 1 over n is the nth root of a. Okay? So that's the first rule that you need to consider when you're working with fractional indices. Secondly, <coughs> If we think about a uh, to a fractional power, so a to the power of m over n. Now, you know that m over n is just 1 over n times m. Okay? Now, if we then just remember that a power of a power is uh, what gives rise to um, what we've got there, written as a to the power of 1 over n times m. Okay? So we can just use uh, the rule for a power of a power to, to go either from here to here or from here to there. Okay, so these two things are, uh, they mean the same thing. And if you then think about what a to the power of 1 over n actually means, that is the nth root of a. So a to the power of m over n is going to be the nth root of a all to the power of m. Okay, so that's the other rule that we have to think about when we're working with fractional indices. a to the power of m over n it's going to be the nth root of a all to the power of m. Okay? <clears throat> so let's use these rules and let's see what we can do with them. Okay? And there are a couple of different scenarios where this rule would come in handy. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out our, uh, uh, our values in the form of the nth root of a to the power of m. Okay? And we'll start off with some simple ones. Okay? At the moment, they're just given um, as uh, something to the power of something else. So let's have a, wee, have a wee look at that. Now, x to the power of a half is just quite simply the square root of x. Okay, you don't need to write the two there. It's just the square root of x. Okay, p to the power of a third is just going to be the cube root of p. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you've got y to the power of a fraction, there four over three what we see is that we've got the cube root of y, and then the whole thing gets raised to the power of 4, or by the power of 4. Okay? For p to the power of 5 over 4, what we've got is the fourth root of p, and then we raise the whole thing to a power of 5. All right? Now, when you've got a coefficient, like in examples 5 and 6, we'll just leave them untouched because the power only uh, is connected to the base, which in this case is x, and in this case it's y. So we'll leave 6 as it is, and then we'll just say, well, x to the power of 5 over 7 is going to be the 7th root of x, all to the power of 5. Okay? And finally, <coughs> with this one, we've got a negative power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it, and I'm going to move the base and power downstairs first of all. So we'll have 8 over y to the power of positive 7 over 6. And then we can just tidy up the bottom a wee bit and write it in the format that uh, it's asked for. And we'll say that's going to be the sixth root of y all to the power of 7. Okay? And that's you done. Okay? Now, the rule can be used to go the other way as well, where you're having to uh, write something uh, in the form or in index form. Okay? So let's do a few examples uh, of uh, questions like that. So to write these in index form, we're just going to say, well, that's going to be a to a power. Now, what's going to be on the top is a 3, 
and on the bottom we'll have five. So it's a to the power of three fifths. Okay. Now for this one, we're going to have a to the power of. Now, what's going to be on the bottom is going to be the four, because it's the fourth root of a, and then you're raising it to the power of negative five. So you have negative five over four. Now we don't leave our answer with a negative in this, so we'll just say it's one over a to the power of five over four. If we move the base and power downstairs. All right. And for this one, <coughs> we've got the cube root of 27x all raised to the power of 4. Now, I'm going to take each part um, separately here. We've got 27 and we've got x. Okay. So if we think, first of all, of um, just the 27. So what you're doing is you're finding the cube root of 27, then you're raising it to the power of 4. Okay. So you find the cube root and then you raise it to the power of 4. And then we'll just do the same with x, and we'll say x is going to be, uh, you're going to find the cube root of it, and then raise it to the power of 4. Now, what happens when you've got 27 and you're finding the cube root? That's going to be 3, okay? So it's 3 to the power of 4, x to the power of 4 over 3. Now, what is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? That's 81. So you finish it off and say it's 81x to the power of 4 over 3. And that's how you would do that. Now, very often this rule will uh, have to be used when you're asked to maybe evaluate something. So we'll look at a few examples of questions where you have to evaluate. Um, so if we look at four questions, and you're having to ask uh, or having to find the value um, in the simplest possible uh, way. Now, anything to the power of a half just means the square root. So the square root, the square root of 100 is just 10. That's you done. Now for this one, we'll say, well, that's going to be 8. Uh, it's going to be the cube root of 8. And then you square the whole thing. Now the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So what happens is that we're squaring 2, and we end up with an answer of 4. OK? And then if we look at C and D. Now this time we've got a negative power. Now the whole reason why we've been talking about uh, leaving your answer with a, a positive index is so that when it comes to evaluating, it will be much, much easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the negative power first, and we'll move the base and power downstairs. Now, anything to the power of a half just means that you're finding the square root. The square root of 49 is 7, so your answer there, the value of 49 to the power of negative a half is 1 7. And we'll do the same here. We'll move the base and power downstairs. So it's 1 over 16 to the power of 3 quarters. So that's going to be 1 over. Now it's going to be the fourth root of 16. And then we cube the whole thing. And the fourth root of 16 is 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So it's 1 over 2 cubed. And 2 cubed is 8. So it's 1 8. Okay. So 16 to the power of negative 3 quarters has a value of 1 8. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to do a few questions yourselves. So you can pause the video and you can try these six questions yourselves and see how you get on. OK? <coughs> right, then. so let's see how we get on. So we'll move the questions down a wee bit to give us a bit of space to do some working. So to write these in the form shown there, what we would say is that that's just going to be the cube root of x and oops, the cube root of x, and we raise the whole thing to the power of 4. And that's us done. OK? For this one, leave the 8 untouched. It's not part of the base. And then you can just say, well, it's going to be the fifth root of y. And then you raise it all up to the power of 7. OK? Leaving the 8 untouched there just as a coefficient. All right? <coughs> now, the next set of questions, you're asked to write uh, them an index form. So what we'll do is we'll just say that that's going to be a to the power of, and it's a fourth root, so four on the bottom, and you raise it up to the power of three, so it's going to be a to the power of three quarters. Now for this one, you've got p, it's going to be the fourth root, and you are going to have a power of negative seven over four. Now, as we said before, you don't want a negative power, so we'll move the base and power downstairs, and we'll leave it as 1 over p to the power of 7 
quarter. All right. And finally, the two questions where you're asked to evaluate. Um, we know that 27 to the power of 2 thirds is going to be the cube root of 27, all squared. What is the cube root of 27? It's 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. We square the 3, we end up with 9. And for this one, we've got a negative power, so we'll move it downstairs, and we'll say it's 1 over 25 to the power of a half. Anything to the power of a half is the square root, so it's 1 over root 25, so it's 1 over 5, 1 fifth. So that's how you would use the rules for fractional indices to evaluate or to um, just change uh, what you're given into the desired format. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.